Hey everybody, so we've got something very special for you today. We've been working on this video for quite a while. It's the $1,500 Studio Challenge. We're gonna take a budget of 1,500 bucks and see if we can use it to buy enough recording gear to record all of the elements of a metal band. Because a lot of people out there think that recording real drums is just too expensive. So we'll see if we can pull it off. Bear in mind, this is just the cost of the recording equipment. We're not counting the cost of the instruments, as most of you guys starting out building studios will be relying on the bands to bring their own instruments. And oh boy, are you guys ever gonna love what the drummers bring in. <laughs> and it gets even better when it's time to record bass guitar. Tell you, I really miss those early days. Not even for 10 seconds. We've all got to start somewhere. So we shopped around for the best deals in North America. And that meant hitting up Amazon, Musician's Friend, and another place I found called Pixel Pro Audio, which was offering some pretty cool package deals. You can find links for everything below. And for everyone who's not based in North America, we haven't left you out. I've done my best to find the equivalent gear at Toman. Please be sure to check out all of those links as well. All right, so let's go over the gear we used and how much everything cost. First up is our centerpiece, the Focusrite 18i20. It's got eight inputs and is more than flexible enough to pull off the job. Cost $499.99. We found a bundle deal at Pixel Pro Audio that includes a set of Audio-Technica headphones as well. These don't have to be particularly spectacular as they're for playback during vocal tracking and not for mixing. The singer basically has to be able to hear himself with some semblance of clarity. Next up is the Samson DK707 drum mic pack. It has all the mics required to record an entire drum set. Cost $225 on Amazon. We've also got two Shure SM57s, $99 at Sweetwater's annual gear fest. I go every year and it's totally worth it. Next up is a CAD M179 condenser mic for $199, a set of Mackie CR3 monitors for $99, and for recording software, we're using Reaper at 60 bucks. We've also got a used Behringer mixer that we picked up on LA's Craigslist for 40 bucks. And for effects, we're using the Slate Everything Bundle at $24.99 for month to month with no commitment for additional months. Here's also a few suggestions for things we didn't buy because we've got most of the stuff already on hand in the studio. 10 pack of mic cables for $39.50. A three pack of mic stands for $44.96 a short mic stand for the kick. And what's cool is we've got enough money left over to add in drum leveler for 139 bucks at B&H, and you'll have a grand total of $10.24 left over for lunch. Okay, so we've substituted a few things as I didn't want to rewire my entire drum room, and the AKG headphones I already have are very similar to the Audio-Technicas. TJ prefers to track his drums with a cheap set of earbuds he picked up in a dollar store. Don't ask me why. Drummers are just plain weird. And as you work with more of them, you'll find this to be very true. Anyway, we've mic'd up the drums with the Samson kit. Q71 on the kick, Q72s on the toms, and the CO2 condensers as overheads. So it's for tracking everything separately, I'm using an SM57 as the snare mic. Overheads were a space pair configuration and we use the CAD M179 as a mono room mic for added ambience. We had a total of eight mics running through live monitoring through Reaper with live effects fed back in the drummer's headphones with 32 samples of latency with zero issues. Communication with the drummer was done via hand signals as there weren't any spare channels to set up a talkback mic. Bear in mind, I've got a set of sliding glass doors that make visual communication in here very easy. For you guys at home, if you don't have clear lines of sight, I'd suggest using Facebook Live or Messenger to communicate. My friend Walter Riggy down the street uses this method in his studio and he doesn't have any glass at all. And apparently it works excellent. Best of all, it's free. Guitars, bass, and vocals were all recorded separately after the drums. Guitars were mic'd using the Dual 57s in a Fredman configuration, plugged into the cheap Behringer mixer and submixed into the Focusrite. We're simply taking the left main output out of the Behringer into channel one of the 18i20. That's it. I know there are a lot of you guys asking about how to hook up a small mixer to an interface, but I swear it's not complicated at all. It is dead simple, just don't overthink it. For more information on this technique, please go check out my greatest metal guitar recording trick I ever learned video. There's all kinds of great information in there, and of course the link is in the description below. 
Bass guitar was tracked into the direct input of the Focusrite, and vocals were tracked with the CAD M179, which is an incredibly versatile mic for $199. It'll do everything from hypercardioid, meaning very directional, to omnidirectional. Plus, it comes with its own shock mount. It's one of the best bang for the buck mics out there, and it's great on vocals, drum room, acoustic guitar, and pretty much anything you can throw at. So we tracked the bulk of this in December and a whole bunch of you guys were asking about the Mackie monitors on my desk. Unfortunately, Canadian winters being what they are, Brandon got sick and wasn't able to finish his vocals. And then came Christmas, more delays, nam, and then we were finally able to track vocals in early February. I do appreciate your patience with us. So on the subject of the Mackie monitors, I'd like to point out that I'm not only mixing the song on them, but I placed the mics and tracked the instruments on them as well. So the entire recording was based on what I heard through the Mackies. Okay, let's check out what we got. Okay, let me do a very quick mix breakdown and I can show you what plugins I'm using where. So I'll just give you guys a quick run through what's going on where. On my main bus, I got a virtual mix rack um, with, you know, the Slate uh, virtual console collection set to like an SSL 4K and a little bit of a roll off. You know, we've got the um, FBC, FG, Gray, boy, good thing they don't make the codes confusing there. Anyway, yeah, that's basically their SSL bus compressor. Slow attack, uh, auto release, a little bit of threshold, not a lot going on there. And the uh, Slate FGX, which is fantastic. I've used this thing for years. And if you guys notice here, I'm using G-Clip all over the place on the drums, and that's just to keep the transients under control. Just a tiny little clip here and there. It's, it's very soft. It's very not noticeable. And best of all, it's absolutely free. Uh, a lot of virtual mix rack. You know, we've got that on kick, snare, toms, all over the place. And um, let me see here. We're using the tone generator trick just for a little bit of um, subharmonic on the kick. There's the actual Samson kick mic. You hear a little bit of bleed there. And if you throw on the sub kick, pretty cool how it all fits together there. But yeah, it's just for a little bit of extra thump. Uh, these days on my main stuff, I'm using the Solomon Low Freak mic, which is absolutely magnificent. I am going to have an episode on that coming up real soon because it's pretty wicked and it's so good. I actually wound up selling my Yamaha sub kick just because the Low Freak is so much better. Um, yeah, just a lot of, a lot of virtual mix rack going on just to, you know, a little bit for basically for EQ and compression. The slate plugins are great for reverb. Actually, I'm using the Voxango old school verb, which is absolutely free. Put that with the snare and it's got a pretty damn cool effect. Bass guitar, we've got the TSE BOD, which is basically a software version of the uh, bass Sans Amp. And again, that's absolutely free. Virtual mix rack for a bit of compression. And um, again, virtual mix rack on the, the vocals for compression and a little bit of echo. That's about it. But um, I've also got drum leveler on the kick drum and the snare drum just to kind of even things out. I don't even think I threw it on the toms on this. No, just a little bit of gate and whatnot. Anyway, uh, back onto the main screen. 
Now, if you guys want to see a full mix breakdown and a lesson based on some of my top level stuff, be sure to check out my upcoming premium lesson, Producing Prog Metal, which will be available on Pro Mix Academy very soon. All right, here's the verdict. Recording on this gear reminded me a lot of my early days, especially with the Samson drum mics. The Tom sounds were similar to what I got with my first set of Tom mics, the Sennheiser E604s. And there's nothing wrong with those. If you check out the first Woods of Ypres record, that was recorded during that era, and the to that Tom sound is all over the place. Check out the track A Meeting Place in Time, and you'll hear exactly what I'm talking about. As for the guitar sound, I'm really happy with it. I've been using the same Behringer mixer on all my top level metal stuff for the guitars, and it just sounds great for the application. Bass, well, I much prefer to track with a live compressor, preferably the distressor back there. Same goes for snare mic, but those aren't deal breakers, they just slow down the mix process and make it more difficult. But my absolute least favorite piece of gear in this whole setup has to be the Mackie monitors. They're just not that great. They're very wooly and it's hard to tell if what's coming out of them is what the mix actually sounds like. I'm definitely not a fan of these at all. My suggestion would be to save up and get a better set of monitors as soon as possible. There are a lot of great options for under 500 bucks, including the upcoming Atom T5Vs, which will retail for $199 each. They'll be a serious step up from the Mackie CR3s. Even a set of KRK rockets are going to be a serious step up. I worked with KRK V8s from about 1999 to 2007, and they were the first monitors I had installed in the soffits back there. I did a lot of good records on them, and they were outstanding for the price point. I really dig the KRK stuff. Bottom line, can you record a full band for 1500 bucks? You're damn right you can. Is there room for improvement? Of course there is. But that's the thing about gear, you don't have to get everything at once. You build up your collection over time. Recording music is a lifelong adventure with a lot of ups and downs. You can start with $1,500 and add to that collection. Upgrade your monitors, upgrade your mics, and most importantly, upgrade your recording skills with each project you take on. Each new band you work with will present its own unique challenges, mostly in the form of bass players. And that's what makes recording interesting. But on the software side, I can record with anything these days, and I still love Reaper and Slate plugins. They're excellent top-level tools. So if you're serious about recording, get started and give it your best effort. And it will be discouraging at times. The trick is to persevere and grow your skills because you'll only get better when you put the effort in. Best of luck to you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.